Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Melissa Armel, and I thought I would give you my opinion of what's been happening the last couple of days with GameStop, and sp specifically today. Uh, it, there was really no play for me in GameStop whatsoever at all. The stock was in a downtrend. It was tanking, tanking, tanking. It was dirt cheap. I typically don't trade things, and I, I and I don't even rate any gaps of stocks that are those low float stocks or really dirt cheap stocks. But people that have small accounts and a lot of the Robinhood traders uh, decided to buy this based on that Reddit forum, and they were all in this, and they moved the price up. Now, the stock did have a few gap bumps in the last couple of days. But when I use my system, there the system didn't rate her to be able to buy those and have a forceful move that would have moved the stock in a bullish direction based on institutional buying. Now, what do I mean by that? For example, when I rate a stock in the morning, which I do in the post-market and the pre-market, sometimes I do it at night. I always do it in the morning. Sometimes I do it in the night of the morning. I'm looking to see what institutions are buying the stock or selling the stock or shorting the stock. And then I rate the gap based off of that. What happened in GameStop stock is that retail traders all piled on the stock, created a short squeeze, okay, where there was a hedge fund that was short the stock, which is one of the reasons it was trending down so much. Then they mismanaged the position. It did not kill the stock when it hit up over the high, which was on January 22nd, okay, where they were probably down in the position then, not so much as they were into this week. Again, what's going to come of that particular hedge fund if they're going to make it or, or through or not, or if this pretty much ruined them, I don't know. But the reality is that either way, the retail traders created a large upward move in the stock this week. It was too volatile, in my opinion, to trade, okay? Now, volatility is a good thing when you can predict the movement when it's controlled. I know this may not make any sense, but there's something called controlled volatility. What happened in game stock was not. The stock was halted multiple times this week, multiple times today. If you've never been in the stock in a position where you've been halted, it, it can be very, very scary. You don't know when it's gonna reopen. Sometimes it doesn't reopen uh at the same price very often it can open higher or lower you can lose money i've seen stocks and again I've, this has never happened to me but I, i've seen stocks where they don't even open again until the following day okay and that is very scary for people too so the volatility was off the charts in this so much though that it just it just didn't make any sense to risk a position in this because you couldn't trade it normally so the one nice thing about what I do is I'm looking for large moves. I'm looking for momentum. I want to get a big move to the upside if I'm long. I want to get a big move to the downside if I'm short. But I don't want it to be like this, 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 this back and forth. That can be very nerve wracking to train. I'm looking for a nice solid flow of money coming in and aggressively moving something up or a nice solid flow of money coming out of something to aggressively move something to the downside, like a, like a sweep, okay? And the thing is, it makes it a lot easier to trade when you have that. And that's typically how, when I'm looking at a gap and I'm rating the gap, I'm looking to see what institutions are gonna come in and buy or sell the stock. And then I'm predicting where those institutional moves are going to move the stock because institutional money does move stocks. That's what I'm pinpointing. And I think the, the what, what has happened in the last couple of days really just confirms to me what I've always known is that as one individual, the way to make money in the market is to go with those institutional moves. What happened this week was a once off, okay? And it is something that could only happen in stocks that are dirt, dirt cheap, that people that have small accounts uh, are buying them. But you see what has happened in, in just today, where now these brokers are restricting these small accounts from trading these stocks that are cheap stocks. So it is it, it really, I think today was probably very frustrating and a nightmare for a lot of people. What's going to happen after this uh, uh, with, with those cheap stocks? I do not know. I do not know. But I will say it, it's a lot safer to train stocks that are not halted multiple times a day, that have a nice free flow volume and momentum in them and move. And, and again, these are very often companies that 
many, many people are training and, and, and are active any, every day and that typically you know the name of the company and, and, and literally they're not, they're not down at these types of prices where they're almost at zero. I mean, when something is trading at, you know, three, four dollars, people were talking about EXPR Express. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, to, to, to short or go long something that's that's cheap. It's like, to me, you know, it, it just, it just makes no sense. You're not going to get the playthrough. You're just not going to get the playthrough in it. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was a stay away from me for the GME. There was no play in there that made any sense this week at all. And even though volatility is a good thing, there's something called controlled volatility. I know what that looks like, okay? I'm, I'm used to seeing that very often in things that we do. It's a smooth ride to the downside or smooth ride to the upside in a big move. It could be unexpected, but it's still a smooth ride. And what has happened in GME just in the last 24 to 48 hours was not a smooth ride for anyone that traded it. And, and there are people that are still in that and they were not allowed to buy more of the stock today on certain platforms. And they were only allowed to sell their positions. And some people did sell, which is why the stock fell. And then some people did not sell. And it'll be interesting to see what people end up doing, because if they're going to switch brokers, they have to sell their position uh, to move their money to a different broker. So I'm following to see what happens with that, because I think it's very interesting. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm conservative in the sense that I'm looking for something every day that I can predict the direction with a high level of certainty that I can do it, that has high odds of working consistently. While once in a blue moon, you may have a move like we saw in the GME this week, that the retail traders uh, basically beat the move or pushed up the move through from the hedge funds. I do not think this is something that's going to be sustainable. And, and ultimately, if several funds wanted to come in and short that stock and push against those retail traders, they absolutely could have done it if some would have wanted to band together and take the risk. Instead, what happened is, again, the brokers ended up taking people out of positions and restricting people from buying the stock and other things as well. And now they're changing the margin requirements in some of these stocks as well and making the, that they need the full cash to take the positions too. So, you know, for me, the it, it just confirmed to me what happened this week. It just gave me 100% confirmation that as one individual, you can make money in the market, but you have to understand the game. What is the game? The institutions control stocks and control the market. The big money does control stocks and does control the market most of the time. And you as one person, if you can predict where that money is going to go, whether it's selling or buying or shorting, and if you play along with that, you can make money with a small account or a big account if you're riding the wave of that money. You can. And it's, it's a lot more controlled of a move than something like you saw in the GME. People are thinking they're going to take a small amount of money and make you know, all this, all this kinds of money. While that can happen every once in a while, like you saw this week, that's not what trading is. What I'm looking at is a, a very pinpointed way to look at something that I can replicate uh, to predict the movement of a stock of the market over and over and over and over and over again in any market condition at all. And, and that is not what you saw this week. This week was really much like gambling where people were in it. And the people that bought it way before, way, 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 way before this move this week were the ones that made out as long as they got out, as long as they got out in time before before the drop off. Those were the people that made out, whoever those people were, you know, I don't know who they are or whatever. But the reality is that when people are looking for get rich quick things in stocks or opportunities or trading where they have no strategy or system to do whatsoever and don't even know why they're doing it, that makes no sense to me. It is so important for people to, if they're going to risk their money, know why you're doing it. One of the reasons why I make my trading room, uh, my trading you can't join my trading room unless you do my class. You can't join my trading room and even pay me for it unless you've taken the Golden Gap course. Why? Because I want people to be successful and you will be more successful if you understand why I'm saying this gap is going to go here or this gap rates this many points or this gap is going to go to this target or this is the support, this is the resistance, this is the long, this is the short, whatever. You will make more money if you understand it. To take trains and not understand the rationale or reason for them is gambling in my opinion. And, and unfortunately, many people were gambling this week in GME. Some made out, some lost. That's not a way to consistently look at making money in the market. 
it's, you know, I whether people like what happened this week, whether they are for the people, against the people, for the funds, for the Reddits, whatever, it's neither here nor there. What is the most important thing, the most important thing that people have to understand is, and, and, and I can't stress this enough, and I was talking about this in the trading room this morning, I understand what it is, okay? I understand the game. If you understand what it is and you understand how to make that work for yourself and use that to your advantage, okay, then you can profit and you can make money. I understand that. I understand that. That is one of the reasons why I created a system 12 years ago to read institutional money in the market. I understand how the system works, okay? You can try to fight the system. You can hate the system. You can complain the system. You can want the system to change. You can do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, what you need to say is, you know what? I can make this work for me. And you have to understand what the system is. And you have to be smart and intelligent. And then you make it work for yourself. Trying to buck the system in the long run really isn't how you make it work for yourself because it's really, it's really not realistic. Okay. What happened this week is not realistic for people to replicate over and over and over again. And that's concerning that people are going to lose money. But, you know, it's it's people's own money. They can risk it and lose it and throw it into the market if they want. Um, but I think it's important for people to learn what to do. I think it's important for people to have a strategy to trade. I think it's important for people to understand that you can do well in the market if you comprehend what it is and you use it to your advantage and you understand that the institutions are driving the moves in the market. They absolutely, absolutely are. So that is one of the reasons why my system, the Golden Gap, is so, it, it, it's one of the reasons it works, okay? It works because I pinpoint institutional money that's happening in the gap. And I'm predicting it ahead of time before it happens. The reason my system works is because I'm seeing that money. I'm seeing that money in the post-market and the pre-market. I'm seeing it in the gap. And then I'm rating it to determine how strong it is, how good it is to decide whether or not to do it, okay, as a long as short or as a bullish gap or a bearish gap. So I've always understood that that institutional money is in control. Always, always, always. So people that want to complain about the system or the way the system is or say these people can't control it based on what's happening now, no. Because like I said, people could have come in together and pushed out all of these traders if they had wanted to do it. It became such overblown. It was on the news everywhere. No one else wanted to touch it. I wouldn't be surprised, though, after I saw this, the, the way the stock just got smacked down today and people were not allowed to buy it. I wouldn't be surprised if anything that happens in this tomorrow, anything at all. You can use a system to your advantage if you're intelligent and you're smart, whether you have a small amount of money or a large amount of money. If you are not going to be smart about trading, you're going to lose in the end. For every one crazy trade that you take, just like this GME one, if you happen to buy it, if you happen to make money, if you happen to even make a lot of money, for every one crazy trade, you will lose in 25 others. And ultimately, then you will lose. Do you understand what I mean? So trading isn't about gambling. For me, it's a very thoughtful, serious process when I go through it. I look at 26 points in a chart before I'm deciding if I like something to do to do as a long or to do as a short. It's a process that I go through. It's a thoughtful process. It's not throwing money into something because everybody else in the world is, okay? And, and I just can't stress that enough how people need to understand that. And, and again, going back to what I was saying about institutional money, I, I knew that long ago. I got that. I got that that was it, and 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 I and I and I saw it. I saw it for myself. And then once I started to be able to read it, once I started to be able to read it and play with it, trading became so much more easier. Reading charts and predicting price action now is so easy for me because I'm able to read that institutional money that's in the chart. And if you can learn how to read it, if you can learn to play with it, then you're not going to hate it, okay? And there's no reason to take this absurd risk. By doing things where, again, the brokers could shut you down and then you end up losing in something or not being able to trade it right because of some such short uh, thing like this happening. And, and remember, you know, when you train, you should never be risking any more money than you can afford to lose. And one of the reasons why these brokers ended up shutting people down and taking people out of positions that, that happened today is because they didn't want to be on the hook for the money. They didn't want to be on the hook for the losses. They didn't want people to be holding these positions even overnight because if the thing had turned, the stock had turned around against them overnight, and that sometimes happens in a gap. That's what creates a gap in the first place, which again, sometimes is buying and sometimes is selling. The brokers didn't want to be on the hook for it, uh, you know, at the end of the day.
So that's, that's, that's my thoughts on that. I'm sure I'll have more to say on that. I did an interview today on The Federalist talking about it. Uh, that will be uploaded tonight. I'm sure I will have more thoughts on it. But, but for me, I felt, gosh, you know, I'm so lucky that I always understood this. I'm so lucky that I figured out something to pinpoint this institutional money. I'm so lucky that I, I can embrace what the system is. I get it. So, you know, you know, you can, you can fight against it. You can hate it. You can do whatever. But if you understand what the system is and you can find a way to make money and profit in that system itself, then that's the, that's the best of both worlds. You know, don't you, don't you agree? So, and it makes it a lot easier to trade as well and a lot less stressful. Uh, so if you have any questions and if you'd like to learn my system, the Golden Gap course, uh, the class, next class is the middle of February. I think it's February 13th, 13th and 14th. Email me at melissa at the stockswitch.com. Have a great day, everyone.